Joined now by sports director Matt McCoy and our own Stanley Jackson. Stan, I don't know if I ever ask you, uh, playing days, how many Buckeyes run your helmet? Quite a few, Joe. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> what are you talking well, about? Well, I thought you'd have a number. I mean, those things are not easy to come by. I know you were a stud. I just now, thought you'd have the number. Stan, can I out you? Uh, you know. Oh, you do you know? It's been a it's no, it's been a while since I've gotten to talk to Stan on the air, and I I don't know if I want to like spoil the reunion here by. <laughs> <laughs> he knows where I'm going, throwing him under the bus. But tell Joel what you did uh, as a freshman when you didn't have very many Buckeyes on your helmet. Well, you know, I had to travel to all the games as a freshman, uh, even though I redshirted and didn't play that year. So one of the games we were going to be on national television, I looked at my helmet, Joel, and I realized I didn't have enough Buckeyes to go out there on national television because I was a redshirt. I didn't play much. Yeah. Um, so I looked to the right of me. I actually, no, let me change it. This was my red shirt freshman year, but still, I didn't play a lot. So I looked to the right and I looked to the left. Eddie was sitting on one side. Bob Horn was on the other. And I said, you know what? These guys won't miss a couple of Buckeyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I plucked a couple of Buckeyes, put it on my helmet. Bob Horn came, sat down, looked at the time, and said, hey, I'm missing Buckeyes. <laughs> and called out to uh, you know, our EQ guy, Danny Swin. And so I said, Danny, somebody's messing my helmet. I'm missing three Buckeyes. It just It goes to show how I'm important the Buckeyes are and yeah. how much they matter. So when I didn't play, I didn't have a lot of them. But uh, I guess I got my fair share once I got on the field. I would say so. So uh, the guys this year, who are you going to be looking to uh, corral in the Buckeyes for their helmets? You know, that's a great question. Initially, I thought it was Dwayne Haskins that we were going to miss the most. The accuracy from that quarterback position, you know, 50 touchdowns, to eight interceptions. I mean, the numbers were outstanding. But after last weekend and watching the Buckeyes blaze the scene, with how fast our wide receivers and even Mike Weber ran the 40-yard dash, I think the challenge is going to be replacing the offensive speed that we lost because, you know, as you guys know in football, that's a huge thing when you have wide receivers that can run with the football after the catch and watching all three of those guys run as well as they did. I'm curious to see if we have the same amount of speed in the locker room and can we have those big plays that come from just a six-yard throw. You know, when they start practice here in, uh, what, 20, 15 minutes, uh, you, there's so many storylines this spring, Stan. You got a new head coach in Ryan Day. You got the transfer quarterback Justin Fields battling with Matthew Baldwin. You got a, basically an entire new defensive coaching staff. Uh, position battles, like you're talking about the lost speed. Um, position battles all over the place. Early enrolled freshmen, like that wide receiver Garrett Wilson and Olin Tangy, Zach Harrison, two of the top recruits in the country. What are the what is the important storyline in your mind? What are you going to be looking at the most over the next month? How do you replace an icon? How do you replace a legend? And I'm not talking about the quarterback that's had one sensational season. Urban Myers is no longer on the sideline. Even with the first three games last year, the second, the, the two games, he was in the locker room. He was at practice every day. But now his presence is gone, and you've got to maintain this high level of play. And that's a lot of pressure for Coach Day. As good of a coach as he is, he's never been a head coach. And then you bring in two assistants that are from that team up north. And so can you continue to be consistent winning football games the way Urban Meyer has? And you and I have talked about this at length, Matt. If Coach Day goes 10-2 and two in his first three years and one of those losses and two of the seasons is to Michigan, I'm not sure that's a successful campaign. And so for me, my money is how do you replace the legend in Urban Meyer and stay at a high level? Because what he did here is just unbelievable. Yeah, you, you look at that, too. I mean, you know, you go back to Trestle, you talk about, uh, you know, Urban Meyer, you know, the Ohio connection, too. I mean, you play that forward and you see how these people are beloved. And we just don't know how we're going to feel about Coach Day yet. Yeah, we don't. But but the good news is that if he wins football games, we'll love him. <laughs> you think about Coach Cooper is not an Ohio guy. I know he's got somewhat of a dicey reputation, but in the good years, he was loved here. So you just have to win football games. You have to continue to recruit at a high level. And if you can get your offense to be as explosive as it was a year ago, I think the fans will figure out how to love you, even though you're not an Ohio kid. Stan, you followed up a quarterback uh, when you became the starting quarterback, Bob Hoying, who had set records the year before you became the starter. So now you got Justin Fields, likely, maybe Matthew Baldwin, who are following up after Dwayne Haskins. What would you tell those guys about uh, the job that they are battling for and about to inherit? What advice would you give them following up a guy that had a legendary season? Try not to beat Dwayne Haskins. I mean, because you can't follow that up. There was no way in the world 
that I could do the things that Bob Hoying did, you know. But I had special skill sets that were different, and you have to take advantage of your skill sets. So if it's Justin Fields, you know, when it's available, run the football. You know, you just you just want to move the chains and be consistent. One of the things we were able to do offensively was our first 15 possessions, we scored a touchdown. And that kind of took the pressure off us and as we were able to rely on a really good defense. So for both those quarterbacks, don't try to be Dwayne Haskins. You don't have to throw the ball all over the yard and throw for 50 touchdowns. 30 touchdowns is a lot in college football, and we'll all be excited about that. And, and play your game. And if you do that, allow the game to come to you. Don't make a bunch of huge mistakes. You'll have a lot of success. That, you know, on, on some level, Stan, that's pretty easy to say. But, you're, I mean, you got to play the team on the field. But if you're Coach Day, you're competing against the coaches that came before you. If you're going to be Justin Fields as the starter, you're competing not only against Dwayne Haskins, but J.T. Barrett. Those two guys <laughs> did it at a high level. Completely different. How do you carve your own way in that field? Again, you don't. You just you do it your way. Think about the number difference between 50 touchdowns and 36 passes touchdowns with JT Barrett had in his best year. So you just do it your own way. But at the end of the day, there's only one thing that matters. If you win football games, then you will win the crowd over. And that's the challenge for Justin Fields. If he throws 10 touchdowns next year and the team is undefeated and they're playing for a national championship, he will be beloved. Think about what Cardell Jones did. He only started three games here the year we won the national championship but people still love him. So you just have to do it your way because if you try to force things down the field, if you try to beat Dwayne Haskins, if you try to beat J.T. Barrett and it doesn't work out and you end up losing a game that you shouldn't to a Maryland or a Purdue, then you're going to tarnish your reputation. So you have to be yourself no matter what. Stan, uh, before I let you go, i got to ask you, you, you mentioned the NFL Combine and, you know, Paris Campbell running a 4-3-2 and Terry McLaurin a 4-3-5. I noticed the NFL Network yesterday put out an all-Combine offensive team. Five of them were Ohio State players, Mike Weber, Dwayne Haskins, McLaurin, Campbell, and Mike Jordan. Uh, how much does that performance – uh, the that Ohio State players had at the NFL Combine affect recruiting and what Ryan Day is now going to try to do to lure players to Ohio State? Well, it shouldn't because individual players should know that this are, these are individual skill sets that don't often you know show up on the field, but it helps because everybody's watching. And what really helps is if you find those guys moving up the draft board. So now if you have three Buckeyes going the first round and the other three going the second, then that's something that you can spread around the country as you're recruiting people. But I got to tell you, Matt, the bigger question is how in the world did we ever lose games with all that (laughs) on offense? I'm with you. <laughs> hey, you said it before last season even started, Stan. If we lose games, it's on the coaches. Maybe that's why Urban's gone. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You had to fire the greatest coach in the history of Ohio State football because you lost to Purdue. Yeah. I mean, listen, I get it, though. I got fired just a few months ago from a job. You know, I was told that they had to put the, the real A team back together. So they said, Jackson, you got to go pack, and I got to get McCoy back with Joel. There you go. <laughs> It's nice that you got a good attitude about it. It's all I know, Stanley. I'm looking forward to it. Spring football, Stanley Jackson, Matt McCoy on News Radio 610 WT.